Hi guys, welcome back to Not Another Budget. I'm Nicole and on this channel I am doing some cash budgeting, some prepping and trying to dig myself out of the hole I've created for myself. Um, thank you to everyone who has um, borne with me while I had a little bit of a break. I was feeling mentally really low after the events of my last video. I also then came down with a chest infection and the seasonal flu thing that's going round. Lots of coughing up of green slime and just feeling generally rubbish. Um, and I also had to drag myself back to uh, work at job number one and number two. And then there were also some other developments that have taken place over the past week, which I will tell you all about, um, of course. Um, but thank you to um, everyone who has subscribed, everyone who has reached out um, with words of support, words of constructive criticism, um, people just wanting a little bit more information. I will be the first person to uh, hold my hands up and say that I probably don't always explain things in the most clear manner. I'm trying to find that really fine line between keeping things confidential because there's there are things that, you know, naturally, like I want to keep private and sometimes I have to kind of tiptoe around things and maybe with words come across in not the clearest way. And I also know that um, because of my neurodivergency and my mental health, I do things that other people wouldn't do with their money. Um and when, when I am comfortable enough to talk about that, I, I do want to do something specific around mental health and money and then also neurodivergency and money because um, what has been really, really clear is like when people have reached out to me, like everyone who's reached out to me in, in a multitude of ways, um, I you know, I didn't put the video out for uh, an outpouring of... Um, you know, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, you know, it was, it was lovely to receive, but it was, it was in the interest of transparency and not, uh, wanting all of the positive comments. And again, that's probably something that's not coming across in the right way either, but I, I did cherish all of them and thank you. And I, and I did try and put effort in to respond as much as I can. I know I am behind on comments again. Um, and then a few of you reached out to me privately, just offering, you know, constructive criticism, asking, you know, questions a little bit further and offering up advice and things. And I was then able to kind of privately give some more information that I didn't want to do publicly um, and clarify a few things. And, and I will always, always take constructive criticism because I, I am new to this. I am, you know, not even two months, well, nearly two months in now, I guess. And I I will make mistakes and there will be things that I haven't considered. And a large part of that is because my brain is, is literally wired differently to most of the population. Um, however, and I do just want to put this, this little kind of caveat in there before we go any further. I firmly believe that every one of you who has subscribed or hasn't yet subscribed but keeps returning. Um, and maybe you're just someone who doesn't comment and you don't reach out. Um, I firmly believe that every one of you is genuinely lovely and doesn't have a nasty bone in your body. However, there are always going to be a couple of bad apples who may or may not subscribe. And, and I don't always get told if a specific person has subscribed. I just get a new subscriber notification or a so-and-so has subscribed. However, what I will not tolerate at all is nastiness in my comments. Now, some of my comments are held for review and YouTube determines which of those they are. I have elected to not hold all of the comments for review. I've elected to trust that whatever is being put up is, you know, within YouTube's terms and conditions and, and is, you know, fair. There were a lot of comments that didn't even make it to being broadcast because they were thoroughly nasty um, and thoroughly judgmental. A couple managed to slip through the net and I have left those up. I am not going to try, I'm trying not, trying to not get into the habit of deleting comments because I don't like what is seen. If it's something which is blatantly offensive and blatantly nasty and, and YouTube picks up on it, it won't even make it to being seen. To the ones that have slipped through the cracks, um, 
I would never ever presume to sit in judgment of anyone um, and what they do with their money. Money is personal. It is personal finance for a reason. And you may not agree with my decisions in the same way that I may not agree with yours. However, unless I really felt like I needed to reach out privately because I felt that there was something that I didn't understand or I wanted clarification on, I would never presume to publicly jump into a comment box and be genuinely nasty. So that won't be tolerated at all on this channel in any form. Um, I am firmly of the persuasion that unless you were prepared to walk up to me in the street and say it to my face, that you are, and I'm going to say it, nothing more than a coward hiding behind a screen and a keyboard. And there is enough toxicity in the budgeting community and too many genuinely lovely budgeters who may already be feeling low or struggling because money affects mental health. Money and mental health is like this. You can't escape it. And uh, trigger warning, I am going to give you a trigger, trigger warning right now. As someone whose debt in 2018 nearly drove them to taking their own life, which I did, nearly, um, I will never, ever, ever allow anyone to make me feel that way over budgeting and my money ever again. It doesn't matter whether you're a stranger behind a keyboard or whether you are a family member and a close friend. I will never, ever allow that to happen. So unless you're prepared to walk up to me in the street, granted you don't know what my face looks like, or you're prepared to walk up to someone in the street and say that to their face, I'm very sorry, you don't have a leg to stand on, and you'll comment and you will be dealt with. Um... So yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way. I know that this is seven minutes. Um, if anyone doesn't like what I've just said and you are a subscriber, I'm really sorry. Please feel free to unsubscribe. Um, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, I, I am a mentally strong person who has dealt with an awful lot. And when you're not feeling, when someone isn't feeling well, and when someone's going through a crisis and things that are unexpected that have happened, I believe that a genuinely decent person would um, offer out a hand of help and a hand of support and not a hand of judgment um, or toxicity. So on that note, um, that's the end of the trigger warning. That's the end of the eight minutes of Nicole going, right, <laughs> that's done. Um Let's just set the ground rules out and let's go from there and then let's move on and close the chapter on that. So, a small update from when I last saw you. The purse was returned, not all of the cash was there. There was about £180 of it missing. Um, so I hope that whoever took the cash um, and took the purse, it was dropped in at the police station and it was anonymous. Um, the person didn't leave any forwarding information and they just walked out and I just said to the police, don't pursue it any further, it's fine. Um, I hope that whoever took the purse and took the 180 genuinely needed it um, more than I did and that they were in a position where um, that was the only option they had and I at least thankfully had the support of other people around me. So I got some cash back um, and that was the end of last week. So um, that went straight back to that. I just handed that straight to my guarantor who had to pay um, the entirety of the rent. So given that some of that money um, was was to be set aside to go towards my rent, I gave that straight to that person um, because I wanted to do. And thankfully, they they stepped up and said in terms of my debt, look, don't immediately add it. This isn't and this is an emergency situation. It's not because you've been, you know, misbehaving with money, so to speak, and, and spending where you shouldn't have been. Um, I did actually want to talk about, because uh, a couple of people had said, you know, why did you, um, and quite rightfully so, like, you know, why did you take it all out as cash? So in terms of like my spending triggers, um, I can walk around shops in person with a bag full of cash and not feel spendy. It doesn't actually trigger me um, because I, and I think actually it's because I have to commute to go to places because I am so rural. Every visit has to kind of be intended 
because there's an extra like cost on time and there's an extra cost on petrol. Whereas um, the thing that really, really, really gets to me is online spending because it's like the whole world is um, there at a click of a button. So when I am feeling particularly spendy and I do have um, and I'm feeling low, I'm an emotional spender. um, I wasn't feeling well, like mentally or physically. And so whenever I get to that point, I do if there is money in my account that's set aside for a certain thing like my rent, I can absolutely guarantee you it would have been spent in an almost uncontrolled manner. So what I tend to do and have always done in the past is just take it out as cash so it's not there. Um, and that happened to be on a day when I was working in the town and I had a couple of things with my own spending money of that, my own little spendy pot that I wanted to go and spend. It certainly wasn't withdrawn with the intention of me going and spending um, a load of all my rent and cash. Like I can happily window shop I can walk around a city and you know buy a coffee and not spend a thing so um yeah just a little bit interesting there so the purse is back um all of my new cars and stuff have arrived so I have got to sort that out and I'm quite glad my purse is back I do like my purse um and yeah whoever um took the 180 I hope that um it went to good use um the fact that the whole lot wasn't taken leads me to believe that that may have been the case um so I'm just gonna cough (coughs) um so I do have some change which I want to do a savings challenge for today um my little 1p challenge I've got my focus is still very much on Christmas in terms of the spare change aspect um full disclosure because I wasn't feeling well because there was a lot going on um last week and then so far this week as well I've not done a budget and I've not tracked so there won't be a week three and four October budget roundup there probably won't be an overall October roundup because I don't have those numbers the last thing I genuinely wanted to do was sit there and do a budget when I didn't know what was going on um with my money where it was coming from who was doing what I was coughing up green slime that was fun um and I was also (laughs) had other stuff going on so we're going to talk about the other stuff now 12 minutes in slightly different video today guys um so we're going to move that out of the way for uh now because I got a job I got a proper adult decent job that's not minimum wage in retail um So I will be moving into an office environment um, and that has very much been, the drive behind that has not only been financial but it's also been health based. I don't have it in me to do one, to try and balance two minimum wage jobs, try and pick up all the overtime to make things work. I think financially it's clear that it doesn't work in the best way Um, and also I am not physically strong enough and I don't want to risk my my lungs and my overall health getting worse when I am only 30 um, to try and strive to do that. So I had applied for a job on the day before I lost my purse. Um, no, the day of actually. Yeah, because it was before I went to work. So the morning um, I'd sent off an application form. I'd sent off, um, you know, my CV. It was a job that I just was one of many that I'd applied for and hadn't expected quite frankly to even get an interview it was just one of those ones where I was like it was the highest salary it was the most obscure it's nothing related to anything I've done before it was the furthest away in terms of commuting and I was like oh well you know it can't hurt I'll just get the CV off and um I had a had to have a pre-screening interview I then had the first interview two days later. I was then called back for a second interview and on the Friday of last week um, was told that I would need be needing to wait a week to find out because the people in question were on annual leave because it is half term week over here in the UK. And um, they contacted me at seven o'clock that evening whilst I was working job number two the slightly better paid one um they contacted me at seven o'clock in the evening they had stayed late in the office to make their decision and they offered me the role so i will be starting i believe because i have to give four weeks notice on both jobs um and i haven't yet given that notice i want to see contract and final information first like i said these the the team are on annual leave um and um at the minute it looks like i will be starting the the very last week of November which is I think the 28th of November so I'd wanted to just very quickly show you what those numbers are looking like because 
I'm going to try and keep wage two. Wage one is becoming wage two. So my smaller salary job, which is the fashion retail job, um, they have said that they are happy to keep me on uh, six hours on a Sunday. So it will be a six day working week. However, my main job is going to be paying flexi time. So I can change how I do that. I'm just going to cough. Um, and I genuinely love working at that company. I love my colleagues. It is bizarrely very, very good for my mental health. I love the product. I love the discount. And now actually I may be in a position where I can afford some of the things. And, um, yeah, I want to try and keep that on as much as possible. So this is my month. This is going to be my monthly wage from each job after tax deductions. So wage one, I will be bringing home two thousand pound a month, and that is after national insurance, pension, student loan, and um, tax has been deducted. Wage two is going to be two hundred and fifty-two pounds a month, and that is for six hours on a Sunday, and that is after relevant deductions as well. And then if I can keep on my freelance in the evenings, and this one is where it's touch and go, um, I'm going to scale that back to half the amount I should be doing and try and aim for an extra £50 a week or £200 a month, which is bringing my total projected income to £2,452 a month. And that is likely to be from January because I will be paid a month in arrears. So for comparison... This is what my projected November income is looking like, £1,498.18. And this is what my 2023 monthly income is looking like, £2,452 exactly. So, (laughs) there are going to be some budgeting changes. Now, I've only just, i.e. yesterday, started to jot down everything that is going to appear as a stable I've not done anything with the phone yet which is why that's still there Um, there are some things that will change my budget so I'm going to have a 60 mile round commute each day for five days so my petrol income is going to or my petrol spending is going to increase at the minute because I um work locally and I um, am familiar with a couple of mechanics in the area I don't have breakdown cover at all I will be taking two major a roads to get to my new job so I will be um, needing to get breakdown cover my insurance is probably going to go up because my mileage is going to significantly increase so I need to ring and speak to them about that um In terms of how my um, spending is going to be, I don't have any office appropriate clothing at all. Uh, Both jobs have, both my um, wage two and wage one have a uniform. So which like, you know, is a top that we can wear with jeans and it's a branded top. So there will be some clothing spending in November because um, that, is just has not been in my wardrobe ever I I don't work in an office there is casual dress but I don't want to turn up wearing jeans on my first day you know I want to make a good impression so there is that I will be resuming Spotify because car journeys um you know I like to listen to podcasts I'm allowed to work with my headphones in so I will be resuming Spotify as a subscription I may pay for Amazon Prime for one month as well um on the run-up to Christmas so There are all things like that that I need to bear in mind. We will come back to this at another point, but I did just want to give you an update on what my budget is going to look like. So I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very thrilled. I am genuinely thrilled. I probably don't sound it, but like I've known about this now for like five or six days. And um, yeah, it was really fun actually, like calculating... um, like my pension and all of the things like that. And I will be paying into the pension. They do a seriously good match. I pay in 2%, they pay in 6%. So um, yeah, I want to keep hold of that as much as possible. So it's very much a um, job where I can grow within a new field. All training will be provided for me. And it's a kind of job where in five years time, if I upgrade into a different company, the salary would go to... 3k a month on wage one 
Uh, wage two, we're going to review it every quarter. Um, myself and my manager have had a conversation. She wants to keep me and I want to stay there, which is why she's happy to look at contracts and offering me six hours on a Sunday. Um, so I'll be on with the Sunday team. And all she said is, look, I am worried about your health, but I want to keep you. So let's review it every three months or so. So that's what we're going to do. So wage two may disappear, disappear, but I want to try and keep it on because two grand a month easily covers everything I need to from a bills perspective. And then the 450 gives me extra to pay with in terms of debt or savings. So that is where we are with that. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee before it goes really, really cold. Um, it's just normal coffee today. There's nothing fancy. It's my first one of the day. I did an eight hour two till 10 shift yesterday. We were incredibly short staffed to the point where it technically crossed the line over whether we were safe to operate or not for about half an hour. Um, and uh, we were just knackered, my colleague and I. And when you're not well anyway, you get tired more easily. So there'll be a separate video on this coming up. I'm going to, you know, we go again with November's budget. We start again. These are the numbers that I think are right so far. Um, but I just want to fine tune that and review that a little bit more and we will go from there. But I just wanted to update you guys on this very exciting news and we will dive into this further. I may do a little bit of a live budgeting session, maybe. We'll see. Um, for now, the cat has just decided to interrupt. Let's go to the... <coughs> Sorry, guys. At the worst of this whole flu coffee thing, I don't smoke at all, but I sounded like I was smoking 40 a day. It was hilarious. Not. Um, so there are no pound coins in my little pot, but there are some 50p's. I still haven't found my Christmas, Christmas insert. I did make one. I promise. <laughs> so the priority is still emergency, month over and Christmas. I may put clothing in there. We will see what I can pull together. And again, I will look at things like uh, vintage and charity shops and stuff like that, which I would do as a standard. Um, but it's even things like a bag for work. I, I don't have a, I don't even have like a satchel or anything, not even a fake one, guys. It's, uh, <laughs> when you work in film, you wear black and you wear comfy. And then when you work in retail, you wear the uniform <laughs> with whatever comfy trousers you can get away with. And thankfully, both of us are jeans. <laughs> if you know, you know. So we go back to my little 50 pence challenge and I have one. Let's just pull out all my 50 pences. Uh, there we go so I have five more 50 pences there so let's cross this off one two three four five it's a bit like I feel like with 50 pences and two pound coins actually it's the whole adage of like you know you're waiting ages for one bus and then they all come along at once I feel like there was a time when I never got them <laughs> Um, although to be fair, I guess as well, like I could always change up some change for the tills at work and take their 50 piece <laughs> um, and do that. So that is ticking along quite nicely for Christmas. And this will start to be dipped into as well as the one pound one as we hit November. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get Christmas off. Well, no, I will only have one retail job for six hours that I need to do for Christmas. <laughs> I don't have to work Boxing Day or Christmas Eve, guys. You have no idea how wonderful that is. I am going to have that time off in between. I won't know what to do with myself. Um, the company does offer as well things like private health insurance and um, other like benefit schemes, but that's all after like you pass the six month probation. So um, I don't need to consider that for a while. Um, and I also wouldn't know where to start with them at all. Like when you work freelance, you don't even get sick pay. So um, <laughs> we, we see. Uh, what colour am I going with for November? Oh, I don't think I have it here. So it'll have to be a slightly different shade of blue. And now we go to the coins. We go coppers first, as per usual. Two, four six pence in coppers and we cross this off yeah it is a different shade that's going to upset me oh well it's fine so we do six pence in coppers and then where are we up to in the miscellaneous silver five ten fifteen yeah i can do fifteen we'll put that over there 
so yeah so i'm going to say it again guys a slightly different video um but i just felt like you deserved an update you've all been you were when i i'm trying i need to get used to using like the community tab because i've also been completely away from instagram as well when i do get a bit low and awful um i don't tend to just go near social media at all um i just keep away from it 20 40 60 80 1 20 50 so i can do 150 as well which is lovely um yeah so i will get back on that i just felt i'm gonna say it crap i felt really really crap physically and mentally and just went no just stay away you guys are all lovely and i know and hoped you would wait as well and you did so thank you very much for bearing with me um, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to try and not keep you guys too long, um, I mean I did like rant and lecture for 8 minutes at the start of the video so I am sorry, I hope that like you take it um, with the faith and the intent that it was uh, meant and um, yeah. So yeah, so that's ticking along nicely as per usual, I think I say that every single time I, I do that, um, but yeah, I'm actually going to go have breakfast because I'm filming this first thing this morning, this is literally the first copy of, coffee of the day and um, yeah, I will be, I'm back on the budgeting train, I promise, I promise um, to every one of you who's been waiting for this video, thank you so much, to my lovely, wonderful, brilliant subscribers. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. Thank you for not doing any of those things, but just being there. Um, you are always welcome um, to reach out to me directly. The best way to do so is Instagram. If you do have any, you know, genuine comments or you want more information, because like I said, I am trying not to publicly go out there and say blah, 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 private stuff. Um, but you know, if, if you have a, a question, cause it, it's not making sense and I've explained something awfully, please, please do get in touch. I would much rather prefer that than, than anything else. Um, and I will see you in the next one, which will be setting up my, um, November budget, I believe, and also doing a roundup of my, where I'm at with my savings so far. So I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.